our state record then. So we are here now concerning the matter of the state of Ohio versus uh, Chase Kaminsky, Kaminsky and Jacob Runyon, and good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Uh, Kaminsky is present in court this morning with his attorney, Mr. Kevin Spellacy. Good morning, Mr. Spellacy. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Runyon is present in court this morning with his attorney, uh, Mr. Uh, Greg Gentile. Good morning, Mr. Gentile. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, and Mr. Rogalski is present on behalf of the government. Good morning, Mr. Rogalski. I see Mr. Gallagher is with you as well. Good morning, Mr. Gallagher. Good morning, Judge. We are here in our case 675007 for sentencing. We're at a prior date and time. Both Mr. Kaminsky and Mr. Runyon entered guilty pleas to uh, count one as charged, which is a count of cheating as a felony of the fifth degree with forfeiture specifications. Also to count four as charged, which is a count of unlawful ownership of wild animals as a misdemeanor of the fourth degree. Um, prior to taking the bench, I did have the opportunity to review the pre-sentence investigative report that was prepared in connection with these matters. And uh, Mr. Gentile and Mr. Spellacy, gentlemen, did you also have the opportunity to review those documents and so any errors, corrections, or omissions that we need to discuss? Judge, I did have the opportunity to re review the documents extremely thorough and very accurate. All right. Yeah, sure. I reviewed it prior to court today. I found it to be accurate. Thank you. All right. And then I also had the opportunity to review uh, a number of other uh, items, most specifically letters of support uh, that were either written uh, by both of you gentlemen, which I appreciate, but also two other uh, members in support of, of each of you that did review those letters, as well as other letters that received uh, through the course of business here at the court uh, that I believe were disseminated to uh, the parties as well. Uh, going forward then, for everyone's uh, understanding, uh, Mr. Gentile, Mr. Spellacy, I'll hear from you your remarks that you may have on behalf of your clients in mitigation. Uh, next, I'll hear from the state of Ohio, uh, Mr. Rogalski, and I should say, gentlemen, if there's anyone else who is here that would like for me to hear from them on your client's behalf, it'll be a new direction. Uh, Mr. Rogalski, I'll hear from you, and if there's anyone who you'd like to hear from me, uh, hear from them on my, in their behalf, that'd be your direction. And then finally, gentlemen, you wouldn't be required to say anything to me, but if there's anything you would like for me to know, it'd be at that final moment in time, and I'll uh, pass sentencing. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. Spelsey, what would you like for me to know? Thank you, Judge. Judge, um, actually, there's very little to say. I mean, we've, we've entered a plea of guilty. We've accepted responsibility for our conduct in this matter. Um, Judge, we uh, did that at the earliest opportunity with the county prosecutor's office. We acknowledged our wrongdoing as soon as we possibly could. We didn't uh, attempt to negotiate a positive outcome for our clients the best one we could, with the understanding that they knew what they did was wrong. Um, you know that there's going to be a forfeiture of the boat uh, from Mr. Kaminsky, and um, it's a significant punishment in and of itself, Your Honor. Um, I know the court's well aware of uh, the publicity that's accompanied this case and sometimes the uh, negative impact it's had on our clients, if you will, um, probably more than many other cases that we handle in this building for whatever reason. Having said that, there are no excuses, Judge. We have entered a plea of guilty to the counts that you have before you. And we stand ready to accept uh, whatever punishment you deem fit. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Your Honor, thank you. Uh, echoing mostly what Kevin just said, but Jake next to me, he certainly understands the scope of this, accepts full responsibility. Uh, there is genuine remorse here. There is a significant penalty. You know, Judge, these two guys, they're now convicted felons. They lost their livelihood. That is their own doing. Uh, I'm well aware nobody feels bad for them. That was the choice they made, and, and frankly, they earned uh, to be felons and, and have their livelihood lost today. There's seemingly endless negative public humiliation for these guys. Uh, we anticipate the court imposing a three-year suspension of their fishing license. Effectively, it's a lifetime suspension for them. They're never going to be fishing in a tournament ever again. They know that. Uh, this isn't something that is going to end here today either. And judges, you know, many times people appear before you and sentencing is the final chapter they go on with their life. These guys are going to have to suffer this for forever. When they go on a date or when they apply for a job, anytime they're Googled, this case is going to come up. Uh, Your Honor, we are we're here to accept 
and respect whatever you decide with their fate today. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Rogalski. Thank you, Your Honor, if I may approach the podium. May it please the court, Your Honor. I want to make a few statements. I have a little bit over a six minute video uh, that I'd like the court to see, uh, explain uh, the basis for the charges, and it's my understanding that uh, one individual who is going to be speaking on behalf of the Lake Erie Walleye Trail, uh, Jason Fisher, would like to make a victim impact statement, and that would then conclude uh, the state's presentation and, and the court could proceed with, with sentencing. We're back to September the 30th of last year, last fall. Uh, the Lake Erie Walleye Trail, that was the culmination of their tournament series uh, that was hosted here on Lake Erie over at Gordon Park in Cleveland. Chase Kaminsky and Jacob Runyon were the front runners to win Team of the Year uh, if they did well in that tournament. So the stakes were high. That day's tournament, Team of the Year, and several side pots and other bets that were all on the line. If they would have won that tournament and won Team of the Year, they would have won in excess of $28,000. Uh, that's, what, that's what we're talking about. This is the end of a long season where Chase Kaminsky and Jacob Runyon had a curiously unprecedented run of success, such that other competitors, other officials of that tournament suspected foul play. Uh, they noticed some oddities, but they couldn't prove anything uh, until Chase Kaminsky and Jacob Runyon were caught red-handed that day. It wasn't a great day for fishing. The conditions weren't great. A lot of the teams were coming in with small fish, not that many fish, uh, and then at the end of the way, and here comes Chase Kaminsky and Jacob Runyon with uh, five fish that drama, is it going to be enough for them to win team of the year? Jason Fisher is doing the weigh-in. Uh, you're going to see this on the video. They weigh the big fish first for a big fish prize and then all five fish together for the combined weight. And they need somewhere around 16 to 17 pounds of fish to win team of the year. Uh, five fish get weighed and it's in excess of 33 pounds. Uh, Jason Fisher, very experienced, he thinks he's looking at four to five pound fish. They're weighing in at six to seven pounds each. Um, you're gonna hear some of the crowd, the peanut gallery in one of these videos as the weigh-in goes on and, and you're gonna see the reactions before they're caught as to what everyone's suspecting. Nobody on that day could have known the sort of viral spread that this case was gonna present. Uh, the, the outrage, not just in the fishing community, uh, and the media worldwide attention that this case has brought. And I echo, uh, I agree with what uh, Attorney Gentile said is they're, they're forever gonna be branded with the labels of cheaters and thieves. And after today, uh, they'll be convicted felons, and, and nobody should feel bad for them because they, they deserve this and, and they earned this. So at this point in time, uh, I'd uh, like to present about a six minute video montage. Uh, these are videos that were taken either by the officials or by other competitors as the weigh-in was occurring, as the fish were photographed, and then as Jason Fisher called Mr. Runyon particularly back over for an inspection uh, when you're going to hear him yell probably the five words that he's going to be me remembered for for the rest of his life. We got weights and fish. Seven nine zero. Weighed in five. 
I gotta tell you, you gotta be 16 some pounds. 33 pounds comes up on the screen. Uh, I would caution and warn the next few videos will have graphic language used.
As you can see pretty clearly from those videos, Judge, namely the other competitors, they knew. Nobody believes that that day at Gordon Park was the first time that Chase Kaminsky or Jacob Runyon cheated. It confirmed suspicions and it led to an outlet of rage. But we're here in a court of law and Chase Kaminsky and Jacob Runyon can only be prosecuted when we have evidence that we can bring in a court of law. And so the state of Ohio was brought these charges and charged the crimes that fit the facts and the evidence. And the plea of guilty that they entered uh, in March reflects their conduct and holds them accountable for what they did in September of 2022. Uh, the cheating offense that they pled guilty to in, and the attempted theft offense that was ultimately dismissed, those would have been allied offenses for purposes of sentencing, and this court would have been able to only sentence them on one of those two counts. The state of Ohio chose the count of cheating. Uh, the possession of criminal tools was accounted for with the forfeiture of the Ranger boat, which is uh, a six-figure boat, and as the defense attorneys mentioned, no small uh, punishment in and of itself. However, the circumstances that of them obtaining that vote, I imagine a lot of members of the fishing community question. And then finally, you see in the, the last snippet of that video, the walleye fillets that they used to stuff the fish to add weight, that is actually the crime in count four of the indictment for the wildlife parks that has the license suspension by uh, not following the proper uh, procedures with walleye that have uh, certain laws that have to be followed. So that's count four of the indictment that led to the maximum three-year license suspension that's allowed by law. If the state of Ohio uh, could have insisted upon a lifetime suspension, uh, it, per perhaps it, it would have, but we're confined by the, by the law on that. Uh, as Mr. Gentile mentioned, uh, there's a lot of consequences that uh, these individuals might suffer even above and beyond what this court's uh, confined with with sentencing. Nothing this court does is going to prevent private organizations or private clubs from um, ostracizing them, banning them, not allowing them into tournaments and other collateral consequences that, that they'll suffer. Uh, the only last exhibit here that we have is uh, with respect to the forfeiture of the boat, it wasn't just that that was a boat that was won with uh, improperly or fraudulently. The boat itself was an instrumentality. When the ODNR law enforcement officers executed a warrant and seized that boat and photographed that boat, uh, they found a compartment on that boat that literally smelled fishy and uh, was sort of customized to have a secret compartment that would have enabled these defendants to conceal whether it be fish that they caught the day before or the lead weights that would allow them to potentially pass a boat inspection. You have photographs of that? I oh, do have photographs of that. And so this is the Ranger boat, and I'm going to direct everyone's attention to where this Ranger bucket is here. There's a, a, a metal face plate, and typically the screws have silicone around it uh, that make it waterproof, and when ODNR inspected that, they were able to tell that someone had uh, removed that plate, enabling there to be a compartment to hide stuff behind there, and that it, it smelled particularly foul when they opened it up. So that's a sort of an orientation picture of where it's at. Here you see the, 
face plate where the bucket has been removed, and then they remove the face plate here uh, in the third picture, just to give the uh, court a sense of how the boat uh, was also an instrumentality of, uh, of their cheating. Uh, so uh, I appreciate the court taking the time to hear from the state of Ohio about this case. I think now would be an appropriate time to have uh, Mr. Fisher, if he chooses to make a statement, come on up. I've instructed him to state his name and spell his name for the record. Sure. Thank you. Morning, Your Honor. Uh, my name is Jason Fisher. Uh, you spell my last name F I S C H E R. What would you like for me to know, Mr. Fisher? Your Honor, I just wanted to mention a, a couple things. Um, the first of all, I, I wanted to thank you and the prosecution um, and, and the Division of Wildlife for handling this matter seriously. It means a lot to us, and not that you wouldn't, but at the end of the day, it is it is a gener complaint generated by fishing. So we appreciate you guys taking the time to investigate properly. Um, I run the Lake Erie Walleye Trail and the Walleye Fall Brawl. I've done that um, since about 2019. I've run tournaments. Um, and in that time, I've run approximately 19 events. And I can list them all out, but I've been instru instructed to be brief here. Um, the defendants in this case have won nine of those events. Um, and 11 top finishes in, in total. So over 50% of my events they've, they've done well in. And I read a statistic somewhere that, that somebody who steals or is a thief gets caught approximately one out of every 48 times. Um, I think it's been mentioned before by the prosecution that this may have not been the first time also the fishermen and the anglers believe that. They believe that in their heart. Um, the, they believe that in their mind. And, and not only what they were able to accomplish and the money that they were able to, to accrue by winning these events, it's, it's not probable and it's definitely not even possible. So then I can ask you just a quick question before you move on. So you mentioned that you uh, supervised or sure. These 19 events, I think you said? Or is it 19 years or 19 events? 19 events. We run several of them each year. Have there, uh, other than these gentlemen, have there been any other multiple event winners? And if so, how many of those individuals? So that was my next thing I was going to say, Your Honor. The next closest person um, to winning events is two. Um, that, that person had won two events. Had won two events. Gotcha. Okay. So in addition to my events, there are others. Sure. There are other people run other events, um, and there, there's been victories there. I also know that there's been several other events that, that, that these two have been violated for rules infractions and or polygraph tests. So there was always some form of smoke um, behind these two. However, I treated them as my friends. I, I worked on their boats. I talked to them. I called them. I defended them many times against my own friends. And I, if there were friends sitting here today, they would say that I retaliated verbally against them by defending these guys. There was never any real solid evidence until September 29th when, quite frankly, they, the, the fish that they weighed didn't pass the eye test. And I knew in my gut that I needed to do something. So I did. And you just got to watch what all transpired. It's not, you know, my proudest moment and probably not a, a lot of my other guys. However, what you saw is emotion. These guys have families. They have jobs. They, they, they do things and they, they follow this passion, the sport of fishing because it's what they love to do and they take that time away from other aspects of their life. Um, I know, I mean, they miss birthdays and holidays because if we get delayed, we may have to go, you know, on another day. So they rearrange their schedule. They financially pay for hotels and gas and, and you name it. These guys are out to try and pursue this thing, which is competition, which we all have done since we were little kids. We always want to win or be the best, and you grow up playing sports. And, and that's why these guys do this. And it brings so much to the community, specifically here in Cleveland, gas stations, restaurants, hotels, 
the metro parks themselves, we all pay $5 just to launch there. I can, I can speak with 100% certainty that these fishermen and these anglers generate revenue for the city of Cleveland and the metro parks, which we're no longer welcome at because of this incident. This year we lost our permits basically because they made the permits so expensive we can't get them. We were, we were to host probably 150 boat field here this year and we're no longer, we had to move events because Cleveland Metro Parks didn't want the drama that you just saw. That drama is because of emotion as to what happened because of these two guys. Um, I'll end with this. I heard the defense talk about some negative publicity. I'll touch on the negative pub publicity that they um, put on other people when they were disqualified from the fall brawl. They attacked the operator of the fall brawl, Frank Murphy. Uh, the Ohio Walleye Federation, when one of them was disqualified for a simple rules violation, they attacked that organization. I actually started tournament directing because that organization wouldn't hold what's called the Vic Sports Center open. So they came to me, hey, will you, will you run this tournament for us? Because one of the defendants got disqualified and they attacked them so much they said, we're just not going to do it. We don't want to do it. So the last thing that I want to say is, again, reiterate, thank you for taking this seriously. But also consider the time that these anglers and these guys spend away from their family and that, that, that time to shine when they may come up with a win or a top finish. These people bring their, their children up on stage. They love this stuff. And those nine instances where these uh, defendants may have generated wins, I guess we'll never know if it was honest or not. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously they, they, they owned up to this one. So, you know, we'll never know about the other ones. Thank you, Your Honor. So, if I may ask, was that you on the video who cut open the fish? It was. Was it you also who said, hey, look, you just need to leave and everybody leave them alone? It was. Well, thank you for that because just watching that, you could, I could see right in vision, you know, mob mentality, but I uh, appreciate your, it doesn't sound right to say your maturity, but your um, intellect to say, hey, look, everybody would stay calm and uh, let's handle it the right way. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Anything else, Mr. Rogalski? Nothing further on behalf of the state, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kaminsky, anything uh, on your own behalf, sir? Would you like for me to know? You don't have to, but it's up to you, sir. I just want to apologize to you, Your Honor. I want to apologize to my family, my friends, the fishing community. I'm feeling embarrassed. Super embarrassed. Bad action that we made. It's one we're going to have to live with the rest of my life. One my kids are probably going to end up seeing growing up that really hurts. Um, I wish I could take it back. I wish I could go back to September 30th and redo things, but I can't. And I just want to apologize to everyone. My mother, she's my biggest fan, she's been there behind me my whole life. Without her, might be nothing. And I I know she's behind me, standing behind me, but I know she's upset with me. And that hurts the most too. And I apologize to Jason Fisher. Me and him was pretty good friends, I can say. He took care of us. We had a lot of you know people talking down and he, he did stand he stand behind us. I just want to apologize to everyone. It's a bad situation. And it's something I wish I could say it didn't happen, but I can't, Your Honor. I'm better than that. Definitely better than that. I'm sorry. Thank you. Mr. Ray, anything you'd like for me to know? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, too, would like to apologize to Jason Fisher, the loop, all the other anglers, everyone who's affected by this. Again, like Jason said, this is embarrassing, ashamed most ignorant decision I've ever made in my life. And I apologize to my family as well. They were always rooting for me. And uh, just I'm sorry to everybody if I could. Thank you, Mr. Thank you.
you know, jumping, uh, you know, growing up by my house was a small pond that, you know, my dad used to take me there fishing. And I still drive past that pond occasionally and smile and thinking about that. And sort of in a full moment, sort of the last year, I had an opportunity to take him fishing up in Fort Clinton, did a walleye uh, charter. And to me, that's what fishing is all about. Those, uh, those moments, those memories, those traditions. I've never fished in a, in a tournament before, but I, watching the captain that we did last year, I think I can appreciate the individual skills that is required to, you know, to find a fish, right? Uh, to, to get one on the line, whether your lure that you use, um, <laughs> actually get it in the boat. Uh, it's not that easy. You guys too have skills, um, but like so many other common criminals who come before me, you chose to use those skills in a nefarious way. Uh, the ancient Greek writer uh, Sophocles wrote, I would prefer to even fail with honor than to win by cheating. And really at the end of the day, you're convicted felons and cheaters. After considering the purposes and principles set forth in sentencing, and we'll find that you are amenable to community control sanctions. And for count one, <clears throat> would be put on group B supervision for both of you. I'm going to impose a $2,500 fine, however, well, and court costs and supervision fees. I will suspend half of that fine, fees, and costs, provided that you guys make a like one half charitable contribution to one of the 501c3 uh, charitable organizations that focus on, <clears throat> excuse me, fishing and children. There's Cast for Kids Foundation, Kids Fishing Foundation, Fish for Kids Charity Foundation, or the Ike Foundation. Any one or other of a foundation, a legitimate 501c3 organization that deals with children fishing. I will forfeit your, uh, your license for the mandatory three or maximum. Count uh, four, I give you a 30 day uh, jail sentence, which I'll suspend. One of the criteria that I am to consider in every uh, felony sentencing, um, one of the big issues is uh, always uh, remorse, which I do genuinely believe that you gentlemen are remorseful. Um, I felt I read that in your letters to me as I've indicated to you, and I do believe that. But there is a consideration for deterrence, which I think is uh, also an equally important um, consideration. And so while I will give you each a community control sanction, I'm going to start you off with a 10-day jail, jail sentence. Um, so uh, my deputies are in the courtroom, Mr. Brown. Um, anyways, we'll start you off with a 10-day jail sentence, after which, upon your release, you report to probation, begin your, uh, your supervision. Um, I don't recall where you generally reside, so if there's a uh, need for courtesy supervision, we will certainly uh, authorize that. Uh, anything else, Mr. Rogalski? I want to make sure that the, well, you've got the record and the journal and the forfeiture of the boat to be Division of Wildlife. And the trailer. And the trailer. Right. Gentlemen, uh, you can take this man into custody for a 10 day jail sentence. Uh, anything else? Uh, Judge, was there, there a length of the probationary term? It's a group B, which is for a year and a half. Uh, they violate the local man's 12 month prison sentence on count one and give them the charge for, for service on count four. Great. Anything thank else? you, Mr. Policy. Oh, Judge, thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. We'll be in recess. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, quarter town recess.